a very warm welcome back to our Moon Stompers channel. I'm Mrs. Moon Stomper. And I'm Mr. Moon Stomper. And are you ready to skia? <laughs> well, Mr. Moon Stomper, what do you know about skia? Oh, Mrs. Moon Stomper, <laughs> that's a really good question. So, as a skinhead, you'd think I'd know a lot about Scar. So, the original Scar, mm -hmm. that started in the the late 50s. Yes. Right. And it is a, it's the, it's the offspring mm -hmm. of Calypso and Mento oh, and yes. Jazz Mixed. Yes. So, what do I mean by that? So, Calypso, it's Caribbean yes. and Mento's Caribbean as well. With a folky twist. Absolutely. Yes. But jazz is like New Orleans jazz. Oh yeah, it's from USA. Yes. And I believe it was invented by none other than Coxon. So what was Coxon's real name? This is uh, Moonstone. Oh, Clement and Seymour Coxon. I mean, Clement Seymour Dodd. Clement Seymour Dodd. Yes. Right, so Clement Seymour Dodd actually started Studio One. But, right, we digress there because okay. the name Scar, where did Scar actually come from, that word Scar? Oh, it's an onomatopoeia, I think. An onomatopoeia? Yes, yeah, an onomatopoeia. <laughs> Such as? The sound of the, the guitar stab, skip, 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 that sound. Absolutely. <laughs> but there's several different versions there is, of, it, there? of there's that. So many. And there's, there's Scarvuvi. Now, who used to say Scarvuvi? Oh, dear. I can't remember, in fact, we'll put that on the screen, but somebody said Scar Movie, so whether it came from that, who knows. Okay. Uh, also, the word skank as well. Oh, yes. And probably from New Orleans jazz musicians, mm. uh, I think so. Scar music, if you don't know what Scar music is, it's a walking bass line and the little stabs on the guitar, as Mrs. Moonstomper put it. Yes. Uh, right. Those are on the their quarter, so their quarter notes, mm. right? So it's often done in four four time in quarter notes, and those are done on notes two and four, okay. uh, and there were in reggae as well, yes, yes, uh, which is quite it's not unusual, but it is quite unusual. And sometimes they're up strokes as well instead of down strokes. If you're a guitarist, you know exactly what I mean. Mm. It's quite a it's not difficult to do, but it's difficult to do well. Oh, yes, there's a difference. So, what do you know about Cox and then that the people at home might not know? Okay, uh, Cox and Dodd, he, had, um, he worked in his parents' record shop and he used to play the records to the customers and he bought his um, own sound system. So yeah, so if you don't know what a sound system is, right, so Cox and sound, mm. that's basically where they've got a, a record player, an amplifier and speakers like well speakers. they're not just speakers they're stonehenge type speakers yeah, very and, very tall yeah literally these <laughs> things absolutely shake your insides out uh, if you've ever been to uh things such as local carnivals uh, you're not in your carnival mm. i'm not sure what that's like but handsworth carnival and things of that sort where they have a sound it's called blues the sound parties system well. blues parties blues as well parties, yes. and they used to put in carnivals they put it on the back of what they called a float and yes. drag it down the road <laughs> with this humongous sound wow. coming out that was just like it was <laughs> it was it was just it was the most basic thing you ever heard you could hear it for miles yeah as well. absolutely and that's what we bought we actually had five of those okay uh, to the point where his mom was actually spinning records for him. All oh, right. Would you believe? Yeah. So this is in the late fifties. Oh yes. Right. But then he got Studio One. Mm. So what do you know about Studio One that I don't know? Oh, Studio One is it's based. It's a studio based in Jamaica, Kingston, Jamaica, um, in a place called Orange Street, also known as Beat Street. Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> right. So Studio One. Yes. Right. Is would you believe? Right, that is dubbed as the Hitsville or the the Motown of Jamaica. Jamaica yes. Uh, and for many reasons, because there was just it was the the music was it wasn't mass produced except it was, but okay. it was it was session musicians. Yeah. So Mr. Coxon went over to America and he went to places like New Orleans. Where else did he go in America? 
Miami. Miami. Miami yes. Of all places, Miami. Yes. <laughs> but he brought back that fantastic jazz music. Yes, he did. And that jazz music, uh, he wanted to reproduce something similar. Oh, yes. But with a Jamaican twist, because all the jazz musicians in America at that point. Mm. Although they were black, they weren't Jamaican black. No. Some of those were French black. Some of those oh, yes. were just like good old USA black. Mm. Uh, or even Spanish. Yeah, absolutely. So they hadn't quite got the Jamaican sound, but he turned it into, into a, it was very, with the Calypso and the Mento, yes. that was the sound they were aiming for. Such a huge influence also as yeah, well. Uh, completely. To the, to the scat sound. Yeah, completely. Mm -hmm. Completely. And when he built that sound, he needed people around him. So you mentioned earlier, was it Lee Scratch, Lee Scratch Perry? Perry yes, yes. So Lee Scratch Perry was his right hand man. Yes. Uh, he was a producer as well. Absolutely, a really good producer. Yes. But they had an in house band. Did you know the in house band? Did you know who it was? Oh, the Scatterlights. The Scatterlights. Now, the Scatterlights mm -hmm. were made up of session musicians. Okay. Uh, really, really good session musicians. Mm -hmm. And they would mainly it was in house vocals right. uh, at that time they didn't have so i've got a studio behind me and it's the world's smallest studio literally mm -hmm. where we run off software and i can pull any sound uh, from oh, any yeah. i can literally make any sound i want in the world yes. in those days they didn't have that luxury no so it was a group of proper musicians who made proper music with proper instruments like yeah that, absolutely <laughs> and you know there, there might be a little bit of trickery involved but I believe that didn't come till later oh, but what they wanted was a sound all of their own mm. for the island of Jamaica yes so when the first wave of or probably when immigration started mm. in the United Kingdom and black people came over yeah. uh, because Jamaica was a commonwealth country at the time and the idea was we needed to rebuild the country in fact I'll just spare the 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 <laughs> the woke crap all together mm -hmm. but they brought that music with them yes they did and the british people had heard nothing like that at all uh to that the happens. point where the boys and the girls were like wow what's that mm. and they, they were fascinated weren't they massively and became really hooked as well massively so. but going back to the scatterlights so mm. was it drummond what was his name don drummond don drummond the Scatterlights split up when Don Drummond went to prison for murder in 1965, wow. I believe. Uh, and I think he died about five years later. Oh, right. So, you know, the Scatterlights are actually, incidentally, they're still going to this day. Mm. Uh, right, there's no original members left now, as we speak, in 2024. But people come and go and... They're an absolutely amazing. They're they're the linchpin of Scar all the way through. Yes. They've been there in some guise. So going back to Lee Scratch Perry, mm. what was what what happened to him and Coxon? Oh, Coxon. Um, um, they they had a bit of a rift between them one time. I'm not sure what the rift was, and um. So Coxon, there's the Coxon and Perry split ways. Yeah. And then Perry went to his own. When he made made his um, produced his own record label. Absolutely. Called Upsetter, what? the Upsetter label. The Upsetter label, but he mm. also did a song. Song, didn't he? yes, Upsetter song. So what was that song about? It was um about the um the bad blood between he and Coxon. So and you thought rap was the first one to mm -hmm. do that bad blood but it wasn't it was happening then oh yeah and that's amazing and maybe and, even before yeah and the song that the lyrics are it, it's only as far as i remember it's only two verses mm. and i'm not well versed in uh pat Wilde or jamaican but <laughs> i kind of get it and i had to read the lyrics myself yes. and it was quite it was quite I think it was quite scathing. Yes, I would say that. Same. Actually, in fact, it was very scathing. I would imagine Coxon wouldn't have been happy about that. Oh, gosh, no. But here's oh. another fun fact for you about Coxon. Okay. So where did you get the name Coxon from? Do you know that? Oh, yes, yes. Um, uh, Yorkshire County cricketer called Alec, Alec Coxon. Alec Coxon, yeah, from the 1940s. Yes. He was an amazing cricketer. Because after all, not all Jamaicans, but a lot of Jamaicans... 
They don't like cricket. They love it. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Spare that. Right? Oh, yeah. So you know, enough of the singing because we don't want to the bots. There you go. But you get the idea mm. of the direction of Scar. Because after how... all, he did used to play cricket. Yeah, he did, and he was he was accomplished. But here's another fas uh, here's another fascinating thing for oh. you as well. So Lord Tanamo, mm. which was Joseph, Joseph Gordon. Joseph Gordon. Yes. Now all these guys are born in the nineteen thirties. Yeah, right. well, so, late twenties, early yeah, 30s. Absolutely early thirties. So mm. Tanamo was born in about thirty two, I believe. I think so. And he was a he was a star in his own right mm. in Jamaica already, playing Mento. Yes. Uh, and Calypso as well. Oh, yes, yes. And I think he got into music at an early age when he discovered a there was a musician playing a, a rumba box. Now, I had to go and oh, Google yeah. what a rumba box was because I didn't know. No. I just thought that was after a bad curry, but however, <laughs> it's not. And I'll put a picture of a rumba box on the screen now, but that's where he got his inspiration oh, yes. from. So when he went to Studio One, Coxon Studio, yes. he was greeted with... Like almost royalty right. because it actually got someone in the studio who was known because all these guys nobody was a, a massive star at the time no. but Tanamo was slightly different if you listen to Tanamo's work mm -hmm. uh, where he did I'm in the mood for love then I'm in the mood for Scar and he did that in 65 I'm yeah, in the mood for Scar if I remember rightly and it's you can hear it's almost like a big band influence behind wow. If that makes sense, it's mm. it's the it's the brass section. Oh yes, and it's really really big and clashy, and it's different to other scar. Yeah, but think. that's the mento influence. Oh yes, yes. Uh, more so, whereas the others have got a, a a jazz influence, but not the jazz timings because jazz is absolutely weird and it's it's a bit it's a bit beyond me because I have like seven eight timing, whereas scar is four four timing. Oh right, I see. So, in terms of Linchpins for Scar or Kingpins or the main people. Mm -hmm. Who else do you know who's a really, really main player in Scar? Uh, the Whalers. The Whalers. So you all think of Bob Marley and the Whalers. Yes. The minute people look at Bob Marley, they go, oh, it's him with the dreadlocks. Well, yes, all the time. And yes, it is, except before then, what did he do? Nothing other than Scar. Scar, yes. And he was quite, he was quite, he was quite good at it actually. Oh yes. Uh, and Alongside the Scatterlights. Uh, yeah, he did. Yeah, absolutely. And what was, what, what song did he do with the Scatterlights? The, the song Simmer Down. Simmer Down. So if you haven't heard Simmer Down, that's yes. that's quite a that's quite a big deal. Mm. Uh, that song was about the tension. Amongst the young men in Jamaica. Oh, was it really? Yes. So now I didn't know that. So <laughs> There's what... just so much violence and un civil unrest. There still is, so though, we... isn't there? Oh, right, but way back then. And that's why that's why the song came about. Because and... he wanted all these young men to, to, to um, behave. And behave listen, civilly. And listen to the music. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, listen to the music. It's music always makes it. Uh... And it does, doesn't mm, it? Bring you know? people together. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, simmer down, control your temper. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. So, and a lot of those songs. So, Prince Buster, mm. Prince Buster. When you listen to Prince Buster, and you know, if if you if you like Scar, you'll like Prince Buster because oh, yeah. you know, if you, like, if you like Madness, you'll like Prince Buster because that's where Madness got all their the inspiration. In, yeah, all the, yes. inf all the inspiration that's influence. It. They got the whole lot from mm. from that. Buster, and yes. even Prince Buster sings about none other than. Orange Street. Orange Street, yeah, which Madness covered. Yeah, there you go. And Madness itself, they've got the name Madness from a Prince Buster song yeah, called ex Madness. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. And um, <laughs> what else is a hard man for dead? Oh yeah, it's hard man for dead. Yeah, so if you don't know <laughs> Caribbean, that's a hard man to kill, basically, yes, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So, so tell me about it, Rob, because you grew up with Scar, didn't you? Yeah. And I, I didn't, so I got into it later on in life. Mm. But you grew up around and about that, so what was it like for you growing up? I did, um, the sounds were ever so good. Um, I did love the sounds, and my parents, my parents used to hold the blues parties in the 70s when we were very tiny. And you hear all these sounds blaring from downstairs, because we weren't allowed downstairs. We had to stay upstairs. And um, yes, hear all these tunes, and we see we'd see people. 
we look outside the bedroom window and see these guys skanking in the street. Because the house was really full, they couldn't fit so many people wow. in our house. Gosh. So, what well, you couldn't fit in our house, they'd be dancing in the street and be so many people lined up on the, um, the pavement outside. That's pretty cool, Louise. <laughs> That's absolutely amazing, that really is. Yeah, but that bass, for being so little, that bass used to shake off. We could feel it through the bedroom floor from downstairs. And is that how you first sort of got into Scar and the, the, the origins of oh, Scar? Oh, yes, yes. And I've then, always loved it. And then Mento as well. Did Not so much Mento. Oh, gosh, yes, yes. But you mentioned, so... But yeah, Mento, I did mention it, but... So um, what is Mento exactly? Tell the, tell the viewers, if you don't know what Mento is, guys, this... <laughs> this young lady, Mrs. Moonstomper, knows what Mento is. Yes, yeah, so Mento is um, it's a form of calypso and um, Jamaican folk music. Yes, yeah, so it's rhythmical Jamaican folk music. Exactly, singing about the trials and tribulations of mm. everyday life. That's it. Yes, it could be about anything. So yeah, but everyday no, life. It normally anyway. is, isn't it? Mm. You know, such as the blues as well. When yes. you look at the blues. But this is not about the blues, and mm. you know. But sometimes nursery rhymes would, would sort of um, you'd hear. So what was that nursery rhyme? That uh, oh, the Anansi Spider. <laughs> the Anansi Spider. So that's a. So what is that? That's like a Jamaican nursery rhyme. There you go. Yes. So you learn something new every day. <laughs> There's others as well, but I can't remember this week. But always remember. Anansi Spider. <laughs> wow, well, there you go. She learned something new. Yeah, yes. Another fun fact for Oh, you. yes, yes. So, moving forward with with Scar, because mm. Scar sort of, it didn't come and go, but it, it was there. Sort of fade in and out. It was there. It? A lot of those guys, a lot of those musicians were actually session musicians, mm. and they didn't get paid a great deal, actually, uh, to the point where I think, when you look back now, they were kind of manipulated. They were by the companies. They, they were because it's over, over here. You mm. had such thing as a musicians' union. Oh yes, uh, yes. So you know, people actually got saying they got paid. You know, when I was when I was doing it, literally it was a bag of chips and seventy five quid a night, and you had enough for your, you had enough for your guitar strings and your petrol. And that okay, was it. Yeah, uh, yeah. But that's a, that's another story. Okay. But those those guys in Jamaica, because mm. what they were doing, they were re recording those hits in Jamaica okay. and they're importing them to the United Kingdom. Oh I see. Yeah so mm. that they might have been made underneath uh, you know Studio One, Island Records mm. or, or whatever but they'd be relabeled oh, right. and then bigger companies would take them they'd make all the money oh, and those artists gosh. they'd just get a session fee of 25 US dollars or 25 mm. 25 dollars whatever that, that is. Doesn't sound much no 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 to not, not at all. Not much so, to live on for a grand yeah. man to live on. Yeah so you know if you're people like Lord Tanamo you you already got your you got your, your, it all mapped out for mm. you. Got some sort of a deal, but some of those guys didn't. And Such a shame. In 1969, mm. it it changed a bit because you got was it Duke Duke Reed? Reed. Duke Reed. Now, if you don't know who Duke Reed is, Duke Reed. He's another producer, isn't he? Yeah, and he was nicknamed none other than the Trojan. Oh right, yes. Uh, and he had a sound system as well, believe okay. it or not, because every yeah to have to be someone you had to have a sound system. Oh, so yeah. he'd mm -hmm. got like a walloping great sound system. Mm. But then he started none other than Trojan Records. Ah oh, right. And if you don't know Trojan Records, then you don't know Scar at all. No. no Where have you been? <laughs> yeah, everything that's everything has been recorded on Trojan, yes. right from the pioneers. Uh, Dukes and the, the Maytals. Yeah, absolutely. Desmond Decker and the Aces. And there's another fascinating fact for you, Toots and the Maytals. Oh, yes. Originally Scar. Who yes, have thought I that? know. Absolutely amazing. And there's a fun fact for you. What's you didn't system? know. Well, you probably did know. And you probably know at home. If you don't know, it's a fun fact all the same. To oh, Toots Hibbert. So, of Toots and the Maytals. Maytals, yes. Right, so it was never Toots and the Maytals when it was a ska band, it was the Maytals. Just the Maytals. Then it became Toots and the Maytals oh, yes. when it went to reggae. Yes. Uh -huh. But him, he was compared to Otis Redding, believe it or not, in terms of voice. And oh, strong and soft. Yeah, no, Otis Redding, if you don't know who Otis Redding, that bloke is stratospheric. Mm, wow. He's like Mr. Motown himself, <laughs> isn't he? You know, yes. he really is. But. I think Toots Hibbert is absolutely spot on for the Otis Redding thing okay, as well. Yes. And Rolling Stone magazine mm. named him as the 
I think it was the 71st best singer, Ooh, best gosh. male singer. Wow. Uh, and he received, uh, obviously, he received he received an honour off Jamaica, oh, but I think it was sort of like the Order of Jamaica, I see. which is, I, I suppose that's like an MBA or something like that, he actually got that, wow. but there you go, so fascinating facts yeah. all around, full of facts again in this video. So, yeah. Who else do you know in, uh, in in those circles who was very influential? Yes, um, Laurel Aitken, um, his real name, Lorenzo Aitken. Obviously, of some sort of Spanish persuasion. He was maybe. born in Cuba, I think he was born. Oh, was he Cuban? Ah, yeah, right, right okay, Cuban so born. there you go, hence yeah. the Spanish persuasion. Yeah. So, what was he famous for? What, what songs did he do? Yes, he sang um, Sally Brown, uh, Skinner Train, Rudy Getting Married. Well, there you go, Sally Brown, so Bad Man has read it. They covered Brown. that, yeah. And those right. second wife scar groups. Yes. Uh, such as the. Bad Manners, when they sang Sally mm. Brown. Yeah, yeah. So yes, Sally Brown's yeah. not their song, is it? No, no. No. Laurel Aitken. There you go, as yes. you just said. Mm. Uh, and then the specials as well. Mm. So uh, you got Judge Roughneck. Oh, yeah. With the specials. That was Prince Buster. That's it, yeah. Yeah, so mm. what else did they do the specials? The specials. It they sang Birth Control, which was um, originally, originally sung by Lloyd Chalmers. Oh, there you go. Yes, okay. and Message to You, Rudy by Dandy Livingstone as well. There you go. <laughs> uh, and uh, there was a few others I did as there well. There is, yeah. There is, was. yeah. So, and then uh, the beat as well. The beat, the beat did. Some Tears of a Clown. Tears of a Clown. The Smokey Robinson and the Miracles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and then, who else is it? So, no, I've digressed there because oh. I've, for some, I know you said UV40 then, you know, oh. she's not scarred. No. You know, sorry. They did Red Red Wine, didn't they? Oh yes, yes. And they didn't realise, did they? It was actually... Neil song. Diamond's song. Neil Diamond's song. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Ali Campbell was ever so upset when he realised it was Neil Diamond's song, but there you go. Uh, uh, you yeah. know, it's one of those spinal tap moments, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah. Going um, back to covers, the beat sang um, Can't Get Used to Losing You by Andy Williams. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yes, of course, yes. yeah. Absolutely. Yes. And there's a few others as well. There was, there? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So in terms of record labels, because we mentioned Studio One, mm. and then we mentioned... Duke Reed. Duke Reed, Trojan. Trojan. And there was other ones as well. So was, uh, was the... Pama. Pama, there you go. Pama, yes. Um, was the Blue Beat, no? It was, it was, uh, it was Blue Beat as well. Blue Beat. A New Beat. New Beat. Bullet. Bullet, there you go. Yeah. And yeah. All, all, of those, all of those records were... All those labels were Jamaican labels. Mm. They were all Jamaican imports, as yes. Jamaican as Red Stripe used to be. <laughs> Not that it's Jamaican anymore. No, it's made elsewhere, isn't it? It is indeed. So, how I first got into Scar, because I obviously I didn't have black parents. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> uh, was literally, it was going to carnivals. Mm. Going to carnivals. So, you've seen the second wave of. The second wave of Scar and Two Tone. Oh, yes. And I, when I first went there, literally, it just absolutely opened my eyes and I thought, what the hell's that? Gosh. Uh, and it scared, it's, it, it, <laughs> it, it, it didn't scare me, except it did because the bass was earth shattering. Wow, yes. And I was just Imagine. like, what the hell is that? You just got blown away, did you? Well, I did. And then I remember buying some, I did buy these actually. Oh. So there was an old chap who lived next door to us and he was a, what they call a radio ham, which is a radio enthusiast. Oh, and when he passed yes. away, they needed to clear his house. Yeah. And in his house, he had these huge mahogany speakers wow. with 18 inch drivers that were announced in an old concert hall. Yeah. And the chap who was cleaning the house couldn't get rid of these things. Oh. And he didn't want to take them because he hadn't got a car or van big enough. So I said, I'll have those. Mm -hmm. And I remember paying him seven pounds, which oh, was a lot of money in those days. So those big old things. And literally oh, they wow. were they were the size of a they were the size of a door. Yes. Each of them. And I hooked them all up to my record player <laughs> in Coxie Sound style. And literally the plaster crumbled off the house oh, on the inside. Gosh. And bits of mortar fell off oh, the wow. outside. It was catastrophic, Jeez. but it was amazing. Yes. So that's what did me for music. It was absolutely, I've never heard anything like it, <laughs> apart from the uh, big sounds, obviously. Oh, yes, the carnivals. And yeah, exactly. Mm. So, what else do you know about the Scar and the Mrs. Moonstop? Because you got the edge on me on this. Okay. You know, I might have the edge on you on Mod or Skinhead, Bods mm. and Two Tone, but this original Scar, what else do you know that's fascinating? 
Now there's a man called Ernest Wrangling, he's very little known. He was a producer and a, a musician as well. Was he a session musician? I think so, yes. And who did he session for? He sessioned for most of the bands we mentioned, like the Scatterlights and um, Desmond Decker. Or oh, Jimmy Cliff as well. There's another fun fact for you. said Jimmy Cliff. So Jimmy Cliff, everything's of his later stuff, but his early stuff, because he was a Scar so, artist yes, as well. He was, That's yes. how he started. Oh, yes. And okay. he won jamaica's highest honor which was wow. called the order of Medi uh, oh, merit, merit. Mm. and that's similar to a i guess it's similar to a uk knighthood oh i see but he won that for his services to music wow, so yes. there you go what a weird fact yeah and did you know yeah. something else was it about was it prince buster was it yeah oh him being an, um, a doctor of um optom optometry optometry so yes. is that a doctor of optometry, is that like an ophthalmologist, like I, an optician? I think so. I think it's got something to do with the eyes. Who knew that? I know. And he went on his musical journey and yes, said, he how did. bizarre. Mm -hmm. But some people do that, don't they? Yes, you know, they do. They uh, they pick a they pick a subject, they show great promise and flair, but then music gets the better of them. They mm. go on the musical uh, journey. That's it, and then they go different directions. Mm -hmm. It's like Laurel Aitken, he did a bit of acting as well. Yeah, I did, yeah, when all that music came over to her, that's when you got the Rude Boy. Mm. And the Rude Boy was the Rude Boy was a Jamaican. It, it was it was a Jamaican. It was the sub, oh. It was a subculture. It was an attitude. Oh yes, it was, yes. But it was a it was a, an in your face attitude of you know look at me, look at my swagger, mm -hmm. and that's what the skinhead likes about that. Yes. Because the, the music, the style, the culture, the dance, yes. and the ska dance as that's well. That's it. So, you know how to do that. That's it, cross your arms. That's it. And then... And shake your hips. Yeah, that's that. Just that's that. It, yes. And there's a, there was a song, wasn't there, done by Scar, Scar, Scar? The Scatterlights. No, 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 no. Keith and... Oh, oh, sorry, Byron Lee and the Dragonairs. Byron Lee and the Dragonairs. Scar, scar, scar. Exactly that one. Jamaica, <laughs> scar. <laughs> It'd be better if we actually played it rather than saying it really wouldn't. Yeah. It? We're just going to crack the camera lens. We can't see it. We'll crack the camera lens. <laughs> what else do you know about Scar than Mrs. Moonstomper? It's just like the sound of Scar. When, when I listen to it, it just brings back so many memories of the times when... Um, the blues parties, my parents, used, like I mentioned before, or my dad used to fire up the record player sometimes on a weekend or a Sunday afternoon as well, and play all those sounds. And then I just, when I listen to them, I just think back to my child, and it just brings back so many good memories. And that's brilliant, though, it's because mm -hmm. a record player, you know, it's like, <laughs> if you haven't got a record player, guys, what you do, honestly. <laughs> so the next video, we're going to be doing a bit of... Madness! Yeah, so if you don't know Madness, then, you know, Madness have been, they're still going now. Mm. They've been going 40 odd years. Yes. And we're going to look at the behind the scenes of Madness uh, and we're going to dissect a few things and we'll have like a few fun facts because that's what we like to do, bring oh, yes. you the bits and pieces you might not know. Uh, what I'm going to say, guys, is this as well. Thank you so much for watching our videos. It is absolutely amazing. The response has been overwhelming. Uh, Subscribe if you can. Mm -hmm. If you've subscribed already, you are now a moon stomper. Yes. <laughs> right, and that is absolutely brilliant. So if you want to be a moon stomper, subscribe please. Yes, please. And if you don't want to subscribe, just watch. Leave us a comment, anything you That's it really, really helps. Anything else you can think yeah. of what we haven't covered, just let us know. Exactly. And <laughs> please. Yeah, and the one thing we don't pretend to be, we're not experts at this. No. So no. in the comments below, if you know better. Mm -hmm. Please, but just do it nicely. There's oh, no yes. need to flame us, like, and we won't flame you back, you know, because it doesn't work that way. We'll keep this nice and respectful. Yes. We'll have a laugh and a joke, and I think that's the way forward. So if you know better, if you were an OG and you were there, let us know all about it, yes. and your opinion really, really, really matters. matters. It really does. Yes. And your support matters as well, guys. Definitely. So until the next time. Keep on skanking. Oh, please say it, guys. Yeah, what I said, I get it. No longer, I get it. Get your heart.